Um, my name is Chris, and uh, this is our unit. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, our unit in New South Wales, Sydney, Australia, in a building owned by Anglicans. I've written, or I've made a couple other videos about that. I've written, I wish I could write. I can't write uh, because I can't use a computer because of the computer attackers. So, yeah, so today we're going to talk about harassment and phone calls where uh, the um, made by Anglicans or and their collaborators uh, to try and put fear into me, um, harassment call, phone calls to me and to my relatives back home, my relative back home, a relative of mine back home. So um, I'll just get right into um, a phone call right away and then uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, some background information and other s stuff that I think is important after. So I got a phone call one day. This is after I started talking about all the break-ins, after I started talking about the computer uh, attacks, after I started po uh, pointing the finger at Anglicans here and saying that the Anglicans were the ones that were doing it and that the student, uh, students here at Moore Theological Bible College were the ones that were um, harassing uh, me, myself and my partner. And um, uh, it happened after that, after I started talking about that, after I realized that they were breaking into our computers and all that stuff. Breaking into computers, breaking into our home, um, harassing us, um, vandalizing the car, and a whole bunch of other things. So one day I, I um, got an email, and uh, uh, I checked the email, and uh, it's, it was from a relative back home, and uh, it's, it said, did you call me this morning? And I says, no, I never. So I, I, th I think if I recall correctly, I, I called back immediately as soon as possible. And um, uh, I, I said, uh, what do you mean? I, or pardon me, I wrote an email and then I called back as soon as possible. First, I wrote an email and said, no, 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 I never did that. Absolutely not. I'll call you back when I get a chance. So I worked out a time when my relative would be home and I called back and uh, I says, well, what do you mean? Uh, and my my relative told me about what happened, and uh, um, the phone call uh, woke uh, them up at uh, five five o'clock in the morning, five thirty in the morning, and the voice was exactly like mine, like it sounded just like mine, and uh, that's why the person thought it was me. That's why my relative thought it was me. So. Um, I says, no, I never called. And I, and I said, well, what'd they say? Well, it was kind of breathing at first. And then they said, oh, I heard the kids were turning 19, kind of like in a dirty, perverted voice. It was really creepy. And I said, what? And um, um, they said, yeah. Uh, my relative said, yeah, like uh, they, um, in a kind of breathing voice said, Heard the heard the kids are turning nineteen, and I asked who it was, and and they wouldn't answer, and it was quiet. And then I asked who it was again, and they wouldn't answer. And I said, "Is this you, Chris? or and then she, um, is this you, Chris?" And no answer. And then um, I just uh, then there was just like a click, and the phone call was over. And I said, "No, no, 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 that wasn't me. That wasn't me at all. I was really angry." very angry when I heard this because they copied my voice to the point where my relative who's known me all my life didn't think it was me totally they knew after a bit that it wasn't me but at first thought it was me it was close enough to almost at first uh, fool my my relative that means in order to do that how would they do that well that means that they would have had to record my voice and copy it listen to my inflections over and over and copy it I doubt very much that they could get a, an accurate, um, clear recording from just walking by. I don't talk outside, and I haven't talked to any of these any more theological brats since I moved here. They're villains. They're they're psychologically um, deranged, and they're cult-like. Uh, they don't think for themselves, and the group tells them what to think. And some of them, in this building, all of the males that were in this building at the time were extremely toxic, nasty manipulative and um, uh, um, thoughtless and um, with no foresight and with um, absolute um, cult-like fanatical obedience to anything they were told and um, with absolutely no backbone and no capacity to withstand peer pressure. So it was a complete cult attitude when I first moved here and it still sort of is. Um, 
So what really bothered me is um, there's several things that they knew that they had my voice record and so well imitated required uh, recording. And when I first moved here, I noticed that there was always walking in the roof. There was always walking back and forth. I always heard sounds that sounded like walking back and forth in the roof. Our unit, the access to the roof is blocked off. It's a it's a hole in the bathroom ceiling, and it's they they um glued it like a epoxy glue. They glued it like with hot glue gun or something like that, like a, an epoxy of some sort. They glued it shut, and then they they screwed it and glued it shut, so I can't have access to it. But every other unit in the building has access through the bathroom. I know this because I asked a guy one time who was working here. I said, "How do you get in the roof?" And because the Anglican Church has all their own employees, and the young guy says, "Oh, every unit has access in the bathroom, and we go through the bathroom." And I said, "Everyone?" And he goes, "Yeah, everyone." So it could have been any one of these male students, and they're psychologically twisted and warped enough that they would go in the ceiling and record my conversations with my partner, private, intimate conversations above our bedroom. That's disgusting. So the other option was that they had a, a, a high density microphone from outside. In either case, if they had a high density microphone from outside and they're recording through the thin windows, they're still invading our privacy in our bedroom and in our living room. Private conversations that are supposed to be only intended between my partner and I. That's disgusting. So the other thing that really troubles me is that um, how to get my relative's number. I had not talked to my relative. I had not sent or received any letters from my relative. My relative did not know where I lived. I do not did not have Facebook. I did not have YouTube. I did not have anything. No social media whatsoever. No Twitter. The only time I got YouTube and Twitter is not recently when I started talking about this stuff and I want to kind of uh, warn people in the public about this group of people that are really toxic and dangerous because they're extremely wealthy, they're extremely powerful, and they were... Um, they have a lot of influence here in Australia, political and financial. Van de Gaulle, uh, Premier Mike Baird, and numerous other rich people that are involved in the Anglican institution. So how did they get my relative's phone number? Well, I already know I said a, a video or I said a video about their involvement with Telstra, and then I think there's corrupt Telstra employees involved. I suppose they could have got it through Telstra employees. I know for a fact that they were um, monitoring our internet and our um, phone activity and computer activity since we moved here. And I do not have Facebook, but my partner does have Facebook. And my relative is on my partner's Facebook, so they could have got the name that way. But that were what required illegal access and illegal monitoring of phone activity. And I know that they've been doing that on a daily basis. Everything that we've been doing on the internet, they've monitored. So if they have full root access to the phone and full root access to the computer or to our um, internet traffic, they could collect um, uh, the information. Uh, like they could find out uh, my relative's name that way. Uh, the only other um, way they could have done it is by accessing my uh, visa application records because my relative's name and phone number was on my visa application records. In this um, building at the time, there was a, a person who worked for Statistics Australia. They could have abused their resources and gotten a phone number working with Statistics Australia. Um, and also, um, the person a person living here goes to the same church that Premier Mike Baird goes to. Maybe Mike Baird gave them, or maybe Mike Baird um, provided them with a, a resource that helped them out and got them some personal information about me. So um, the fact that they did this, and the fact it would have been difficult, I mean, for them it would have been easy because they've got access to the government. I mean, they've got access to anything they want, basically. Um, for a guy like me, it would have been difficult. But it required um, high-level organization, and it required high-level um, commitment, and it required psychological, a really twisted psychological state of mind because the person sounded just like me. So that means they acted and they practiced my voice. Now, later on, uh, a short time later, I got the same phone call. So I picked up the phone and I thought the phone was broken because when I was talking on the phone, I answered the phone and I thought it was my partner. Nobody calls me. So I immediately assumed it was my partner. I says, hey, how's it going? Or hello. And uh, the person went, hello. I said, hello. 
And the person went, hello. I said, who's this? And the person went, who's this? But in imitating my voice. So I, I, I said, uh, I got, um, I waited, paused for a second, nothing was said. And so I hung up and I looked at the phone number and I checked it and it was a Victoria phone number. So they used the Victoria phone number so that they couldn't be charged criminally because over the lines, it's a different state. So using a Victoria number, see, using a Victoria number, they didn't, they wouldn't be able to be, um, uh, you know, prosecuted here in New South Wales. And there are lots of students that go here to this more, the a few students that go to this more theological college. Uh, one Indonesian guy had um, uh, Victoria license plate on plates on his car. And there's other people that are from Victoria too, because people from all over even Australia come to this Bible college. So, uh, um, and not to mention that they have people in Telstra that uh, work in Telstra that uh, they could use that resource too. Uh, maybe getting a dead number or maybe maybe getting a number that wasn't in use or couldn't be tracked or a number that was no longer in service just going through a long list and finding and using that number uh, who knows using a burner phone who knows I don't know the point is is that uh, the phone call that was the same voice that phone called my made a phone call to my relative made a phone call to me that's extremely disturbing extremely psychotic and um it's also illegal, I think, pretty sure, but where I'm from, impersonating somebody like that is illegal. And impersonating and harassment phone calls is illegal. And then making harassment phone calls implying danger to the receiving party. I heard the, I heard the kids are 19. That, that's kind of like threatening. And, and to top it all off, it's my relative, a loved one. That's threatening to me. So this is very, very bad. And uh, they've been doing this since I moved in and, uh, uh, it's repulsive. The fact that the police don't do anything about it is repulsive. And the fact that uh, nobody's interested because they're cowards and because the Anglican Church is so powerful and has so much political influence here in Australia is repulsive and disgusting. All in all, uh, there's nothing that I've seen in this organization for these more theological Bible college students that gives me that it shows any indication that they're trustworthy. And yet these people are going to Indonesia and planting churches. They're going to be around children, poor children that look up to them because they're white and rich and Australian. And I am sure that they're going to abuse that situation exactly the same with the same violence and aggression that they've abused my partner and I since we moved here. So please, people, beware of these, this um, organization. Beware of these people. They're, they're not nice making a phone call, imitating, impersonating me to my um, uh, relative, um, and the subject matter being, it's repulsive. I, I heard the kids are turning 19. Come on. If you don't think that's wrong, there's something wrong with you.